Welcome back. In this video on brushing up on algebra, we're going to be talking about adding rational expressions. And remember that adding rational expressions, rational expressions being just uh, fractions that have uh, variables in it. That's what we call a rational expression. And adding rational expressions is just like adding fractions. You need to have the same denominator before you can add or subtract. And at the end of this video, I'll have an explanation as to why you have to have the same denominator, but I'm going to go ahead and start with some examples first uh, because that's the uh, oops, because that's the the thrust of this uh, video series. So I'm going to start out with the wrong way to add uh, rational expressions, and this is the reason why I want to do this is because once again this is something that I see a lot of people a mistake a lot of people make. So I want to uh, go ahead and show you how not to do it. So the wrong way to do this is just say, okay, well we add the top and we add the bottom. So you have 7x minus 2 plus 3x plus 4 over x squared minus, uh, plus, not minus, minus 1. Ah. We'll leave it like that. So this is the wrong way to do it. So, definitely be sure that you do not do that because you need to have the same denominator before you can add them together. See here, we just added across. Well, you don't you don't do it that way. You actually end up you need to make sure that these denominators are the same first. So, first thing I'm going to do is multiply the left fraction by x minus one over x minus one. This doesn't change the value of the fraction. All this because x minus one over x minus one is just going to be one. So since this doesn't change the value of the fraction, uh, that means it's a perfectly legal thing to do. So I would say equals, and then we have over here. We want to change. We want sorry. We want to multiply top and bottom of this fraction by x squared. And again, this doesn't change the value of the fraction. And the reason why we want to do this is because we want to make sure these two denominators are the same. Keep in mind that our end goal is to make the denominators the same. That if, when you keep that end goal in mind, it makes it easier to realize what you need to do and why you need to do it. So this becomes, um, I'm going to multiply these things together. Remember to go ahead and um, distribute these out. So we have 7x times x will give us 7x squared. 7x times negative 1 will give us negative 7x times negative 2, I'm sorry, minus 2x plus, oops, not plus 1, plus 2 all over uh, x cubed minus x squared plus, now we want to distribute this x squared so we'll get 3x cubed plus 4x squared all over x cubed minus x. Now let's go ahead and go a little bit onto the next page. Um, now we have enough that we can go ahead and put this uh, all, because we have, sorry, let me start this over. We have the same denominator, so now we can go ahead and add across. So this is the same thing as 7x squared minus 7x minus 2x plus 2. I'm going to go ahead and put that in parentheses. Plus 3x cubed plus 4x squared all over x cubed minus x squared. Now let's see if I could, whoops. Okay. So now let's go ahead and combine like terms so um, over here we have well, let's take a look first at the, at the highest order term so 3x cubed there's only one x cubed term so 3x cubed and then the square term we have 7x squared plus 4x squared that'll be 11x squared and then the just x terms, uh, x to the first terms, we have negative 7x 
minus 2x cubed is minus 9x. And then 2, there's only one um, constant term. And uh, we want to cancel if we can, but in this case we can't. So, And canceling will be in a future video as well. So this will be as far as we take it. And now let's go on to example two. Now I want to factor everything. We want to factor everything that we can because our goal is to have the same denominator. And again, keep in mind that that's our same, that that's our ultimate goal because that makes it easier to realize what we need to do and why to do it. So let's first go ahead and rewrite this um, with factored everything out. So this first one's a difference of two squares. Uh, we talked about the difference of two squares just briefly in one of the previous videos. Uh, and this next one, we want two numbers that multiply to make positive one and add to make negative two. Well, that'll be x minus one times x minus one. Or you could also write this as x minus one squared. So now I want to make sure this has the same denominator in each one. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and go across this time. Uh, no, I'm going to go ahead and stick, go in this direction. To do that, we want to multiply. Uh, see, this one already has an x plus one and x minus one, but to make sure it, we have the same one, we need to figure out what's missing from it. And this is missing the second x minus one. So we have x plus one, x minus one times x minus 1 over x minus 1. And over here, we have the x minus 1's, but we're missing the x plus 1. So it'll be 1 over x minus 1 squared times x plus 1 over x plus 1. So this becomes x minus 1 over x plus 1. x minus 1 squared, I realize I'm getting, uh, I might already be cut off from the bottom of the screen. Uh, so then we have okay, so now let's go ahead and scroll down some. So now we have um, the same denominator. You have it in different order, but it doesn't matter because when you multiply things, it doesn't matter your, the order you're in. So this will become x minus 1. Now we can go ahead and subtract across. So we have x minus 1 minus x plus 1 all over uh, all over x plus 1 times x minus 1 squared. We want to distribute this negative. And we have x minus x, that'll give us no x's left, and negative 1 minus 1 will give us negative 2 over x plus 1, x minus 1 squared. Um, so that is going to be the simplified form of the original problem, which was 1 over x squared minus 1 minus 1 over x squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and go into just a little bit of detail on why you need to have the same denominator. I wanted to leave this until the end of the video because it's, because it's theory based. Uh, but what you're doing is you're actually combining like terms. And I'm going to use, um, this is going to be a theoretical explanation, but I'm still going to use particular examples instead of general cases. But when I say that you're, what you're actually doing is you're combining like terms, what I mean is that remember from the previous video that what this means here is 5 times, um, you know, I'm not going not gonna to do this right here. I'm going to go ahead and do this over here. What this means 
is 5 times 1 over x squared plus 4 times 1 over x squared. Ah, uh, yikes. So, uh, when we're combining like terms, now we can go ahead and factor out this 1 over x squared. See, in this case, we can add them because they already have the same denominator. So we can, now we can factor out that 1 over x squared, and it just becomes 20 times 1 over x squared. And remember that this just means uh, 20 over x squared. So we go again back to the definition of what it means to divide, uh, what, what a fraction really is. So then we can factor out this 1 over x squared, and we have 5 plus 4 times 1 over x squared and 20. That's why it works whenever we have the same, whenever we have the same denominator. Now let's see why it doesn't work if we have different denominators, why we have to change it first. So when we have 3 over x, remember that's the same thing as 3 times 1 over x. 3 times 1 over x, and uh, this will be the same thing as 7 times 1 over x squared. Well, you don't have like terms. You can't factor those out. So if instead we rewrite this as 3x over x squared plus 7 over x squared, that's just taking, um, that's just uh, uh, multiplying top and bottom of this left one by x to get 3x over x squared and 7 over x squared. So now we can rewrite this as 3x times 1 over uh, 1 over x squared plus 7 times 1 over x squared. Now we can factor out this 1 over x squared. And this just becomes 3x plus 7 over x squared. And I, this is obviously something that you wouldn't write out every single time. You just go ahead and go straight from here to here. But um, that's the explanation as to why you need to have the same denominator whenever you're adding two rational expressions. Because what you're doing is you're actually just combining like terms. All right, that concludes this video. I will see you in the next one.